It's PS Plus Extra and Premium Time once again. The mid-month update which throws a bunch of games at subscribers, and this month I think it's good. I'm here to show you footage from all the games and a quick overview to help you decide what to play this month. Please do me a favour and drop a like and recommend a game for us all to play. I'm Adam, hello there, and away we go. Take a look at this, Marvel's Midnight Suns, a tactical turn-based RPG starring as many Marvel heroes and villains as you can think of. If you've played games like XCOM, you know the mechanics at work here. The stage is effectively a chessboard, with characters taking turns to use their abilities from a deck of cards and manoeuvre around. I know when I say that out loud it doesn't sound fantastic, but I beg you to try this. I think Marvel's Midnight Suns can pull in players who are not into deck building games. We also create our own Marvel hero woken up from the crypt and brought back to life to bring these superheroes together to defeat Lilith, Dracula's daughter. There's an intriguing mini open world section when not on duty to talk to other Marvel characters or hunt down for clues to a bigger story at play. Marvel's Midnight Suns is currently rated at 81 out of 100 on Metacritic and for me this is a must play. Game 2 is a remake of Resident Evil 3. We play as Jill Valentine who returns home to Raccoon City only to see the zombie outbreak has reached her neighbourhood. Set in third person we need to escape the city before it is nuked with many puzzles to uncover and solve while constantly fighting off the undead. The thing which makes this game so memorable is the Nemesis, a bioweapon sent by Umbrella to be battle tested by hunting down members of the STARS police unit. And of course, our Jill is one of them. The Nemesis can and will show up constantly, completely uninvited, and will keep you on the edge of your seat should he catch your scent. Unlike the other remakes of Resident Evil 2 and 4, 3 is much smaller in scale and more arcade-like to play, with an average playthrough of around 10 hours. Metacritic 79 out of 100, well worth your time. Sports fans, your game of the month is NBA 2K24, the Kobe Bryant edition on both PS4 and PS5. As well as updated NBA and WNBA rosters, the core mechanics for the series have been revamped. For example, dribbling is now more responsive than ever, with over 100 variations. I never knew bouncing a ball could be so varied. How do you feel about annual sports games? Gonna play some meatball? If you want a sports game that's a little more deadly, then have a look at Blood Bowl 3. Basically, it's football, the American version, but instead of humans, we have fantasy characters, including orcs, trolls, and goblins. Because this is a Warhammer game. Mechanically, this is a strategy game, including dice rolling, which dictates the flow of play and like the name suggests, things can have brutal consequences. With a character creator and a recruitment system, like bringing in your own orc cheerleaders, Blood Bowl 3 is a fever dream of a game with tons of replayability. Sadly, reviews are a bit poor on this, 56 out of 100 is the average. Something a little more family friendly now, as we have another LEGO game. This time LEGO DC Super Villains. The action platformer we all know and love puts the bad guys front and centre this time around. Get this. It's essentially kill the Justice League as imposters have overthrown the good guys and now the bad guys must save the day. It's honestly a pretty good story all things considered. And like usual there's something about Lego comedy that just hits right. LEGO DC Super Villains has an average review score of 7.5 out of 10, and come on, it lets you make your own LEGO villain. Dragon Ball fans, the long wait is finally over. The PS5 version of Dragon Ball Z Kakarot is finally on PS Plus Extra. We can relive the story of Goku with current gen graphical upgrades the original didn't have. Even more poignant now, the Dragon Ball creator Akira Toriyama has passed away. The action is both horizontal and vertical as battles can go anywhere, and the RPG elements and open world give this game the ability to take over your life. You have been warned. Metacritic 78 out of 100, it is totally worth your time. The puzzle game for the month is Mystic Pillars Remastered. It's a take on an old Indian board game with pillars that are built and destroyed to control the flow of water. This version is here to test your mathematical and quick thinking skills, and there is said to be a pretty captivating story to unfold too. And finally on extra is Super Neptuna RPG, a side-scrolling RPG in which we make up a team of goddesses and explore dungeons in turn-based battles. By winning, we upgrade our team, giving them more skills and unlocking each goddess's supreme versions. Average review score, 6 out of 10. So, if you've got to this stage in the video and haven't found something to play, take a suggestion from me. As Rise of the Ronin is releasing this month, your timeline will be filled up with open world samurai shenanigans. Well, the two games that inspire it are already on PS Plus to play right now, Ghost of Tsushima and Neo. 
Neo is essentially a Souls-like game where timing parries and reposts are the key to success in this brutal supernatural Japanese world, whereas Ghost of Tsushima's open world is the perfect playground for more approachable, honourable fights or more sneaky, underhanded, rooftop running ways to win a war. The director's cut of Ghost of Tsushima is on PS Plus Extra right now, which includes the DLC content and some really cool armour skins. Everybody loves a samurai game, right? What Sony gives us with one hand, they take away with the other. A total of seven games will be leaving PS Plus Extra on March 19th, so you have a little time to finish any of these titles. Ghostwire Tokyo, the first person action game which has us facing off with supernatural entities, all thanks to a spirit that has possessed our body, giving us mysterious powers. And speaking of spirits, Chia, the open world sandbox adventure that lets us possess other life forms and inanimate objects, is leaving too. Also, say bye bye to Civilization 6, the humongous turn based strategy game about taking over the world goes away on March 19th. And the criminally underrated Outer Wilds leaves the collection, as does Code Vein, Haven and Neo, The World Ends With You. I have no doubt all these games will return one day, and I'll keep you updated when they do. Okie dokie, over to Premium and Deluxe, and it's pretty good this time around if I do say so myself. Starting off with Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trilogy on the PS4. The iconic Capcom games made the jump over to Sony's PS4 console as we take part in thrilling court cases. Our job is to save the innocent and condemn the evildoers all within the justice system. All 14 episodes of the first three games are here to play through, unless you have any objections. Building a case using cunning is something everyone should try at least once, and as the Metacritic score is 80 out of 100, it's a great choice for March. Here's a retro game I remember, Cool Borders from the PS1. A snowboarding game where we bomb down hills as quick as possible, finding the fastest route and hitting as many stunts and jumps as we can on the way. Back in the 90s, bro, this was elite gaming. Jack and Daxter's PSP game The Lost Frontier is dragged up to PS4 and PS5 standards as we fight sky pirates in a customizable airship. With tons of guns and mindless shooting and a few mini games to break up the running and gunning and flying and shooting, The Lost Frontier was rated 7.4 by IGN back in 2010. God Eater Burst, another PSP game, makes the jump to current gen. We take down all the Aragami beings that have suddenly invaded our homeworld. And one more, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R. That's a long ass title. It's extra. The one-on-one -on -one fighter is crammed with over 50 characters from the iconic series and is here for fans of melee combat. Although this version released in 2022, the original, of which this is a remaster, came out in the early 2010s. And for that, it isn't able to compete with modern fighting games, but it's great for a hit of nostalgia for the game and the show. And wait, we have another update. Remember we were given the Sony Pictures Core app for being on PS Plus Premium? Well today, it has been announced that starting on April 1st, My Hero Academia Season 1 will be available on the Sony Pictures Core app to anyone who has PS Plus Premium or Deluxe. This will be the start of more Crunchyroll content coming to PS Plus Premium very soon, so maybe it's time to download that Sony Pictures app. Okay, that's our month. 13 games and a TV show. What are your thoughts? I'll be in the comments snooping. I'm Adam, you're awesome, it's been a pleasure. See ya!